Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan with PTC Education, and today I'm going to walk you through what FutureScript is and how to get started with using it to create custom features. FutureScript is the programming language that all of Onshape's Part Studio features are written in, and we can use it to create custom features that can help speed up any repetitive or complex task that you might have, be that modeling and modifying a part, or creating data sets and measurements. To get started, I'll use the Part Studio that our blank document comes with. Before we dive into writing a feature script, I'll first go through importing a custom feature that's already been made. There's plenty of examples in the feature script documentation that you can find at cad.onshape.com slash fsdoc. We'll be importing the Lighten feature and using it to do some weight relief. Going into the document that has that feature script written, in the top left, we can see a button that lets us add the custom feature into our toolbar. From there, we can implement it in any Part Studio that we open up, directly from our toolbar. To demonstrate this, I'll open up a new document here, and I'll quickly make a cube. In the top right, you can see that the Lighten custom feature is available for us to use, even with the document containing that custom feature closed. Now that we've seen how to add a pre-made custom feature, let's get started with writing a custom feature of our own. But before we get started with opening a feature studio, one thing to take note of is that you can view the feature script that is creating all of the features in a part studio at any time. Simply right-click on the tab at the bottom, and the view code option will appear. Clicking on it will cause a feature script pane to open, and you can scroll through all of the feature script to see how all of the default on-shape features are being used in your part studio. Let's start by opening up a feature studio. Uh, to do this, we go through the same process as adding a part studio or assembly, but this time we click on the feature studio option in the bottom left. Taking a look at this screen, a lot of our options are neatly laid out and self-explanatory. Along the top, we have all the basic options that we might use to create a custom feature, such as solids over here on the right. In the top left, we can see a button labeled new feature. And when we click on that, the document automatically generates a code block that we can then use to get started with writing our custom feature. Let's take a closer look at it. The first block at the top is the precondition block. Here, we define just that, all of the information that the user might need to input or any other preconditions that our custom feature needs in order to properly execute. A simple example would be a user selected option, giving them the choice of how large or small to make a dimension. Uh, to do this, we would create an annotation here and populate the fields appropriately. All of this syntax and structure can be found in the documentation at cad.onshape.com slash fsdoc as mentioned before. I'll utilize the remember previous value and set that annotation equal to definition.length so that it can be referenced as such from anywhere in the feature studio later on as a variable. Now we go into our part studio and import our feature, which we do from the top right if we're within the same document. And we can see that an option field comes up asking for user input on how large this dimension should be. Now that we've covered preconditions and their uses, let's take a look at the main functionality of our feature, the post condition. In the lower block, we'll implement the functionality and behavior of our custom feature. Uh, this is where we want to write out all of the operations, such as making sketches, extruding, uh, and any other combination of features and operations in order for our custom feature to fulfill its task. Uh, in this example, I'll show you how to use the extrude, boolean, and query functions to create a relatively simple shape uh, that is driven through user input. It won't be an immediately useful shape, but it highlights some of the most common features that you might use uh, in order to get more creative in making your own custom features. Uh, we'll start out by making a sketch, and we do this by using SK Sketch. Uh, the fields inside that we should take note of are the name of the sketch feature, which we'll use to reference this sketch later on. After that, we create a rectangle on the sketch by using SK Rectangle, and we see that we can put in some parameters for the locations of the two points that will define a rectangle. Uh, we'll be using the length parameter that we created earlier in the precondition to define the dimensions of the cube we're creating. Uh, so we'll go ahead and place that into the field for the second point. And after that, we call SK Solve. What this does is it binds the sketch entities to the sketch that we created earlier on. Uh, now that we've created the square, we use extrude to do exactly that. I'm going to define the end depth again as the same dimension dot length that we created earlier on in the precondition. Uh, if we wanted this to be any other end depth, we could define a, another dimension in the precondition. And now, if we commit and go back to the part studio, we can see that the cube is there. We can change the length parameter to dynamically change the dimensions of the cube from within the part studio uh, using our custom feature. I'm going to return to the precondition and add a new field, and this time we'll call it whole radius. Uh, again, it will be a length unit, and I'll assign the user defined value to definition.radius. Before we move on to the next step, let's perform some cleanup. Onshape automatically deletes sketches for us once we use them in an extrude, for example, while we're in a part studio. However, we can still see the sketch that was used for the initial extrude feature. We'll have to perform this cleanup step ourselves by calling opdelete on the sketch. 
we'll create another sketch on the front plane, again using SK Sketch. Uh, this time, however, instead of making a rectangle, we'll use the SK Circle tool uh, to create a circle that represents the profile of the hole that we can cut into our cube. I'll use the definition.radius value that we defined earlier in the precondition. And again, we call SK Solve to bind the entities to the sketch. After that, we again extrude the profile in the same direction as the square earlier, uh, and to the same depth, which was dimension.length. Now we have a solid cylinder passing through a cube, but really all that results in is still a cube. We want to cut the cylinder away from the cube, and to do that we use a boolean operation. To do that we call op boolean, and we define the cutting tool as the cylinder that we just created. Uh, notice that we have to use queries here to define which feature is the cutting tool, and which is the body that we want to cut away from the boolean. This is a pretty simple query, but it's good to take a moment to look at it and understand it. Uh, simply put, the query we use here returns the body that was created uh, using a specific feature or operation, such as the earlier extrude operation. And that just about covers how to get started with creating a custom feature in Onshape using FeatureScript. Hopefully this short tutorial was helpful to you all, and will help inspire the community to continue to create amazing features for other users to enjoy. If you've got an idea for an Onshape how-to video, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to ensure that you're notified when we post more how-to videos in the future. Have a great rest of your day.